Hi, my name is Bob German, and this video is Building a Conversational Bot for Microsoft Teams, Part 1. This video will show you how to build a bot that takes commands using natural language interaction with Teams users. In this video, I'll show you how to use Lewis, the Language Understanding Intelligent Service in Azure, to predict the user's intent and any related information about what they're trying to do. I'll show you how to call Lewis and clean up the entities that it returns. So let's dive in. So let's begin by considering the different types of conversations in Teams. Inside of a Teams channel, there are many users involved and the conversation is threaded. So it's easy to create a new conversation accidentally instead of replying to a thread. You also have to at mention the bot with each interaction. This makes it hard to have a back and forth dialogue with bots. For group conversations and channel conversations, I'm going to um, suggest a different approach using adaptive cards. The approach in this video is more of a back and forth conversation and is more suited for one-on-one -on -one or personal apps. So imagine I'm a consultant and I'm just finished up at a, at a job and walking out to my car and I pull out my Android phone and bring up Microsoft Teams. So I want to remember, I want to bill my hours as easily as possible. So I'm going to use the voice feature of the phone here. Today I worked three hours on the fourth coffee project. But the Teams-based bot is right there to pick up my, my project and confirm it, and I'm done. Now sometimes users don't provide all the details. I worked on a project. Which project? Well, the bot asks. Contoso. Uh, but we're going to find out there's more than one Contoso project. The first one. No problem. The bot's going to lead me through. Three hours. Last Tuesday. Okay, now it has all the information, and once again, it can go ahead and bill the client for the work. So to make this work, I used Lewis, the Language Understanding Intelligence Service in Azure. Lewis turns utterances, that is, whatever the user said, into intents and entities. What does the user want to do? Book me a flight in this example. And the entities. Berlin is where I'm coming, going from to Paris on Wednesday, those are the entities. And typically the, um, the intent is going to be a verb and the entities are going to be direct or indirect objects of that verb. So you can build and update a model in Lewis and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then query that model from your bot to figure out what your user wants you to do. Now in practice, you're not going to get perfect results back from Lewis. You're going to get uh, predicted intent and predicted entities, your bot still needs to handle itself appropriately if it can't get all the information. So uh, what's typical is that you're going to actually send the message text, the utterance off to Lewis. And if you don't have any idea, if Lewis can't even predict what the intent is, then you're going to get a generic response or maybe use Q&A maker for uh, a general response. If, however, you know what the intent is with reasonable assuredness, then you can go in and try to get the entities and any that are missing, you can prompt the user using dialogues. So in this video, I'm going to show you, Lewis, how to create the model and how to query the model. And then the next video, I'll show you how the dialogues work so that we can refine this down to the exact information we need to act uh, to do the action that the user has requested. By the way, you can get the code for this demo at aka.ms slash consultingbot. So you're going to want to start by navigating to lewis.ai and logging in with an account that has um, Azure admin permissions. And you can see here I've gone in and selected my Azure subscription and what's called an authoring resource, which is the location of the Lewis instance where I'm going to put my application model. So um, you now create this right inside of the Azure portal and um, it actually gives you a lot more control and notice that the pricing is still pretty good here. 
so I can get um, five calls a second and a million calls a month for free. So let me go back here. I'll just create a new app to show you what that's like. So we'll make a food ordering app. And I need to set the key for uh, using the model. Okay, and now I don't really need this little tutorial, so I'm going to skip by that and go right to the build tab where you can see the intents and entities. Now we already have an intent here, which is the non intent. And you really do want to come in here and put some counter examples of things that aren't ordering pizza or aren't ordering food in this case. Now, obviously um, you want things that are going to be common mistakes. So, okay, now let's make a new intent. And what you need to do now is come up with different ways of expressing that intent. Okay, so a few different ways, and, and a lot of work can go into the, the end of this and figuring out how people of different cultures and things like that might, might interact with your bot. So now let's go in and set up the entities. So pepperoni is a flavor, so I'm going to make a new entity called flavor. And I could make it a simple entity, which is just a string uh, that's taken out of the context of the sentence structure. A hierarchical entity, which would be something like a geography that has a hierarchy to it. Composite is where multiple words are coming together to build a bigger entity phrase. I'm just going to use a list entity because it's kind of the most reliable. And this is a flavor. And I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I kind of prefer to edit these over in the entity, in the entity editor. So we also have a size entity here. And now let's go over to entities and uh, fill in some different flavors. Notice that it was already smart enough to suggest some, oh, bacon. How could we forget bacon? Mark would never forgive me. Um, and since they put in ham, well, we've got to put in um, pineapple just to annoy people who think that pineapple never belongs in a pizza. And now I'll go over and do my sizes. And notice that I can also have synonyms. So you get the idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and train this model. And now test it. And it figured out with 80% probability that I wanted to order pizza. And if we inspect this, you can see that it did indeed pull out the size and the flavor. Now it didn't really transform those synonyms into the original word, but it did use that to correctly identify the entities in my phrase. So before we look at the Lewis model for my consulting app, let me show you a couple other examples of what it can do. So here I'm actually asking it to do some magic with um, the date last Tuesday, and also to translate from minutes into hours. And that works well. Also notice that I'm going to be able to handle extremely, I want to handle extremely terse requests, because in this kind of an application, people may not always take the time to type everything out. Still have to disambiguate, but there it is. Okay, so let's go into the Lewis app. And you can see in here that I've got a couple of intents, add person to project, and I haven't showed that one yet, um, and then build a project, which is the one that we're working with here. And there's a bunch of some long-winded, some extremely terse examples. The entities are kind of interesting because I actually have two date time entities my date time entity could really be one of two things. It could be the day that I worked or the time that I worked. Yesterday I worked for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a date time. 
and yesterday as a date time. So um, I actually created two different roles in here. And if you look carefully at my uh, if you look carefully at my utterances, you can see that I've actually tagged not only is this a date time, but this date time contextually is the time worked versus this other one, which is contextually understood to be the day that I worked. So if I test this, for instance, you can see that it correctly determined that um, the date time today was the day that I worked and that the 20 minutes was the time that I worked. So when you're done with your app, you want to publish it. And once you've published it, you can actually go in and export the app. You also need to copy the Lewis app ID and app key into the app settings.json file in your project. Notice that I can export and import versions of the app, or I can also do it from my dashboard here. I can actually, um, I mean, from the app list here, I can actually come in and import or export from these. So it's a nice practice to export and put it into, put the JSON that you get right into your project in Visual Studio. Um, and so here you can see inside of um, my repo, I've got the, inside of my project, I've got the exact um, Lewis ready to be imported and used along with my project. Now, in order to make this work, I actually um, had to use a couple of NuGet packages. One was the botbuilder.ai.lewis, and the other one was this microsoft.recognizers.text.datetime. Um, that's one that I'm using to convert the terms like yesterday or last Tuesday into a date time. In the code you see here, I'm just going to do the date time. So here is a class that I wrote, part of my project, that actually calls Lewis and kind of cleans up the results. So you can see what I'm really trying to do here is fill in, um, let's go to the, where, what's our goal, right? Let's take a step back. Um, what I really want to do is get this information right here because I really need to know what is it that, I really need to know enough to go and update the, um, the back end system. Right, so this is what I really need to update the backend system. As I'm going and gathering the information, I have this more detailed class that has all of the information that I've built up so far. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna get as much of this as I can out of Lewis, but it's not gonna be complete. Then my bot dialog is gonna look through, see what's missing, and ask for all the missing values. So basically everything in here is going to be about filling in this data structure and then when it's finally done, I'll be able to fill in this data structure uh, that I pass to the back end. So <clears throat> this recognizer class, what it's going to do is it's going to actually go and create a new um, consulting request details object, right? That's what it's going to give us back based on whatever it gets from the utterance that the user typed, which is inside of the turn context. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, connect to my Lewis application and uh, get a new Lewis recognizer for that. And on line 34, I'm actually going to make the call to um, Lewis. So then I'm going to call recognizer uh, get top scoring intent and it's going to return two variables the intent and the score uh, now I'm going to start trying to get some of these other values so um, the person name um, which is used in the other um, intent actually the project name the date time values the day worked these are so it turns out that not a hundred percent of the time is it going to be able to tell whether a date time is um, my day or the time that I worked. So if it doesn't know, it's just going to return it as a regular date time. So I'm first going to get any regular date time values that were extracted. Then I'm going to try to get ones that were marked as being in the role of day worked. And if I didn't get anything, then I'm going to actually use the date time values instead. Same thing with the time worked. If I can get ones that were uh, tagged as time worked, I'll take them. Otherwise, I'm going to use the date time values. Then, big case statement, as you would imagine, for um, my intent, if it's a built-to-project intent, 
I'm going to try to extract, I wrote these little methods to try to extract the date and the hours. And so let's go in and look at those. And those are going to get uh, put into that data structure as it gets more and more detailed, right? So this uh, method extracts the work date and it's using that date time recognizer to do it. And it's actually going to um, return uh, the, the value that it finds. And then same thing here, extracting the work hours. This one we're actually going to return uh, a numeric number of hours and it's going to translate from minutes into hours for me automatically. So as you can see, I'm on my way, but this is not the complete solution because I might not have all the information I want and I might um, also need to disambiguate some of the information such as um, if the project name that is in Lewis isn't an actual project name, um, that would be a problem, right? So that's going to be the next video. I'll show you how to build a dialog that will go through, clean up all the data, and get it to the point where you can actually update the uh, request for the user. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at bob1german.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.